Yes. yes. No, we're we're streaming. We're recording. Yeah, the we're show's recording. going. <laughs> we're recording, Nate. The show has time begun. To, time to put the beard back on. The show's on. going, baby. This is our first oh. ever uh, podcast that Episode. we're that we're streaming. First like, ever podcast that we're streaming. Oh shit, we're streaming live. We're streaming live. Dang, Doug, we're plugged into it. We're and I was plugged into shit, it. I was talking shit about the web pirates, and now they're gonna come for us. Everyone watching this knows about the web pirates. You're just speaking truth to the choir. That's what the classical huh. saying is: truth to choir. Truth, truth to choir. To choir. How are you guys doing? You know, remember in the first few weeks of the pandemic when we yeah. were like. We would call everybody and be like, "What? Well, how are how are you doing? How are you holding <clears throat> yes. up? Have you seen? Have any of have you brushed up against anyone yeah. in the grocery store? Are you uh, washing your groceries when you get them home? Are you burning your masks and your hands and your fingerprints off? And now we're just like we don't give a shit. So now I want to know how are you guys holding up? I'm doing great, and here's why. I got lucky. I work at a well, dispensary. He- you have your uh, Twitch on, and I think we can hear it in the background. Oh, shut up. Get out of here. We can. <laughs> Get out of here. The point is, it's going unusually great for me, and I feel right. somewhat guilty about it. I got that yeah. guilt to where, like, I'm hey, doing listen. better than ever. That's called survivor's guilt, and oh. here's how I reconcile it. Oh. It, is more important, <laughs> it is more important than ever to find bright spots in this sea of darkness. You must uh, cling to them. You must celebrate them. You must, uh, we must turn inward for true insight, and we must listen to Werewolf Radar uh, every yeah. day. Even every the old day. Stuff. Even the old weird stuff. Dude, if you want all the episodes, because they're kind of hard to find, mm-hmm. werewolfradar.com, dark, dark Council area, join mm-hmm. our Patreon, you get a password to the Dark Council area. It's a buck. You can it's come hang buck. out in the Zoom room. Shout out Archive A from Beyond, Adam P. Archive of... All the old episodes, Tale of the Unknowns, our audiobook of Frankenstein. Uh, I'm putting up my TV show that I put up there that I took off Amazon. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. check out that weirdness. I forgot what it was called. And uh, my... Oh, the Trump appeals. (laughs) And my... And the uh, the butthole cut of cats. A lot of people don't think it exists, but it's there. We found a cut Mm -hmm. of the butthole cut. Mortalfradar.com. Werewolf forward slash has the cut hole. Cat's butthole cut. <laughs> uh, we can't deliver on that. I don't have that. That's, I can uh, make that page gosh. happen and say, sorry, oh, we were lying this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'll have to Photoshop something together. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Nate, how are you doing this pandemic? Uh, oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, Nate, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. Yeah? Oh, I'm just an old coat. Just hanging around. You okay, bud? Yeah. All right. My sometimes my dog goes and lies down in the cupboard, and she has a, <laughs> she, has a she has a real vibe like. Don't mind me, I'm just an old coat. <laughs> Boy. Well, no, I'm enjoying cool. the pandemic with you virtually. We're playing more games together. We're podcasting more. It's, I've been I've become a being of pure light and fury. I exist in the web. I I'm worried about web bandits and web pirates (laughs) uh but other than that i'm i'm kicking the crap out of pop-up ads i'm surfing pornogs i'm uh you know getting chips implanted brain dancing how many chips have you got implanted baby have you got the covid chip implanted yet (laughs) i'm trying not to man yeah you Oh, you gotta get it. No, dude, dude. get it, to. get it, gotta. get it. It's better than the flu chip. It's better no. than the flu chip. Better than the flu oh. chip. It bundles with Disney Plus. <laughs> it bundles with Animal Planet. It bundles with David Attenborough running on all fours. Oh no! Ah, oh, he's coming at us. All our, all we're saying is this COVID shot. Mwah. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that COVID shot, and I suggest you do too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast. My name is Jordan Dahl. I'm Nick Balding. And I am Roger Norquist. (laughs) Today's episode of Werewolf Radar is brought to you by Monstroco VPN, Virtual Pirate Net. Do you have a problem with virtual pirates throwing nets at you? Throw back with Monstroco Presents VPN, Virtual Pirate. Pirate net. 
I like program. it. Come on. Comes on a floppy yeah, disk. Yeah, yeah. As we're all <laughs> learning about Doge and the bits mm-hmm. and the and the and the Aglo brand, mm-hmm. uh, you know, staking. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. There's Everybody's pirates the of virtual machines. Ho- yeah, there's there's virtual pirates out there. Everybody's psyched about Dogecoin and cryptocurrency. Kay Hammond in the in the Zoom room called it uh, boy uh, astrology. Boy, boy astrology, hysterical. Um, and and to that we say, then why is it called crypto? Oh, there it is. Oof. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Got her. <laughs> uh, but to be fair, when I every time I hear cryptocurrency in the zoo in the in the news, I do assume it's like Bigfoot with a lot of cash. <laughs> fucking, I will say this shit for cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, first of all, buy Ethereum. Second of all. Uh, no doge man to the moon i, I uh it, cryptocurrency has sure made it harder to find um stuff named like if i was looking for a like dog man yes it, crypto the first thing that would come up would be like dogecoin <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh no it happened to me today i'll get into it i'll tell you the story We're, the point is we'll go into it patrons maybe we'll talk mm-hmm. more about it in our in the february monthly hangout where we'll talk uh, just uh, about uh, stuff uh, uh. oh sorry february february yes Furbuary. but we're thinking about doing a werewolf Month ray dollar words. ray dollar oh really like a crypto buck yep yep uh, adam p in the chat just now saw it i was all like God. yep let's in- let's do uh, this that's enormous that's tremendous uh maybe uh maybe it would be cryptid coin and really just make <clears throat> really really confuse people <laughs> like the ray dollar is backed by how many people believe in bigfoot and if Big- you don't believe in bigfoot bigfoot dies bigfoot bucks Big bucks, uh, big buck hunter, too. Um, welcome to February, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The theme for February is all things hairy, all things, mm-hmm. uh, all things uh, sh- shaggy and and unscrupulous cryptids with hair, creatures with fur, uh, Loch Ness monsters with locks. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, we're talking big feet, dog man. What else is there? Beast, Beast of Bray Roads. Beast of Bray Road. We covered sheep last bull. week. Oh, sheep. sheep. Yeah, there's a sheep foot. There's, in fact, a sheep foot I know about. There is a sheep foot. Goat man. Uh, Goat man. I've heard of. I've he heard owns of. a bridge. He does. Uh, he surely uh, does. I would like to... Um, uh, start? Hit you guys, hit, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm a start. I'm a start, okay? I'm a start. Start. So I was, I was digging into some of these you know um because there's this is a uh, this is a wide net you know there's a lot of furry furry critters out there there's a lot of um that uh that we don't know about cryptids you could call them so i started looking for some of the weirdest ones have you guys ever heard about the fur bearing trout no what uh i i did come across it while doing the same thing you were doing apparently Fur-bearing trout is a legendary creature purportedly found in North America and Iceland. According to tales, the trout has created a thick coat of fur to maintain its body heat. Tales of furry fish date to the 17th century and later the shaggy trout of Iceland. It's <laughs> uh, a good Disney movie. Euphemism. <laughs> American publication dates from a 1929 Montana Wildlife Magazine article by J.H. Hicken. A taxidermy furry trout produced by Ross C. Job is a specimen at the Royal Museum of Scotland. It is a trout with white rabbit fur ingeniously attached. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I'm into the, it. That was one of the weird critters that I uh, stumbled across. This is kind of a, um, one of the, uh, um, what did we call them? What did, what did they call them? Fearsome critters. They used to love to call them fearsome critters of the American West. And uh, oh, yeah, th- yeah. this actually is like um, a categorizing term. If you Google fearsome critters, yeah. America, you will come up with all of these kind of wood carvings of like the squonk and the, uh, which was known to uh, be a creature that was constantly crying and uh, would, would cry because it was so ugly. 
Oh, it, it knew its own went, ugliness? It never sad. To its face, and it could cry itself into a puddle of tears. Uh, Unfortunately, it, reflective. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the fur-bearing trout was among them. It's like saying yokai or monster in my pocket. Sure. Uh, Etc. Um, Ghoulie. Uh, but monster in my pocket, of course, another euphemism. <laughs> I digress. Fur-bearing trout, one of the many monsters that I fell fell upon in my research another one ever heard of the octo squatch <laughs> uh no i'm certainly prepared to so this is from fandom.com i used to deliver lunch to fandom um hope you guys are doing okay <laughs> uh it was in the summer of 1961 Approximately 11 p.m., Archimedes Sanchez, a truck driver, was navigating the steep roads of the Basque Mountains in the Spanish province of Vizcaya. He traveled these <laughs> roads several times before, but tonight he would encounter a creature known unknown even to the most esteemed cryptozoologist. Sanchez and his riding partner, who chose to remain anonymous, we're nearing Puerto de Barazar, Ooh. ready to unload their goods and rest for the night. That was when their high beams caught something at the base <clears> of the <throat> embankment on the opposite side of the road. Sanchez slammed on the brakes, and he and his co-workers stared in utter disbelief at what they were looking at. Sanchez would later describe this as a three to four foot tall hairy octopus with a shaggy coat of rust colored hair. The creature hastily covered its round, glowing eyes with one of its four tentacle-like appendages, but remained unable to move. The kind of did one of these, like a bullet, uh, <laughs> caught in the truck's headlights. <laughs> Neither the truckers or the creature moved what the, for what the man estimated for several minutes. However, it must be noted that during times of fear or shock, time can seem to dilate due to the surge of adrenaline. Several minutes could in real time be less than a minute. Fear got the best of Sanchez, and he ordered his comrade to attack it with the jackhammer they had. <laughs> That's first of all, I've used a jackhammer. That's just not something you like uh, use yeah. as yeah, a weapon. Yeah, uh... He was met with refusal. Oh, uh, I yes, he would have been. <laughs> Sanchez decided to make his move. He threw the truck into reverse, then drove straight toward the entity, stopping mere feet in front of it. Sanchez repeated this several times, but never exited the vehicle. After a while, another truck passed by, and the driver may not have seen it, as he did not slow down or turn around. I can they eventually. Let me, <laughs> let me just say that how you would use a jackhammer in a weapon situation would have been like, I need you, Mick, to grab one end, and we're just going to ram it as I just hold the trigger down. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you've seen From Dusk Till Dawn, at one uh -huh. point, uh, Clooney has that giant spike. Uh, that's that true. Is uh, like they they put that yeah. in the end of a jackhammer. A so you would. Yeah. That's it. that's how you would use it. Mm -hmm. Um. So uh, I'm gonna go. But ahead he does and drop not this... run this thing over. He does not dr run this thing over. Uh, that after a while they reach a standstill. Neither man was willing to escape the vehicle. And the furry being was either unwilling, unable, or unwilling to escape. It was near midnight, and they realized there was nothing more they could do. They finished their run and left it behind. <laughs> By the time Sanchez <laughs> revealed his story, all evidence of the creature was long gone. And he drew a picture of it. I'll drop the link in the Zoom room. Remember, if you are a Patreon <laughs> member, you can come and hang in the Zoom room. Every week, Sunday around 2.30, we kick it in the Zoom room. Um, and uh, you can see the links that we drop in there. That Send is it. a picture of the Octo Squatch, but that is not where I landed for my segment. I landed because one of the more substantial, this is literally all I can find of the Octo Squatch. If you got reports of the Octo Squatch, hit me <laughs> up because this dude is my favorite. He looks very fucking Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, very HR Puff and stuff, very uh, fucking um, like foster's home for imaginary friends sure sure uh he's a delight i could see him just like popping on a little top hat and being like well the ship's here i got on the wrong one <laughs> he got on the wrong <laughs> bus or something anyway uh i landed on the devil monkeys you ever hear about the devil monkeys oh no yeah uh devil monkeys are apparently real <laughs> <laughs> You know about uh, you know about the phantom cats in 
the UK. Yes. Yeah. Like how there's supposedly a population of the beast uh, of Leeds, the beast of Leeds, if you will, is one um, a, a, a population, a hidden population of panthers breeding, living, hunting, more importantly, which in... there was a sighting of the beast of Leeds recently. There's... Tracks were found pictures of them very clear pictures of them i believe it 100 percent uh and it is a good uh it is a good example of how animals can exist uh right under our noses if they don't want to be found you know if they're good um but we got one in the united states that's kind of like that but it's not a panther though there are supposedly panthers in the north in north america sometimes it is oh, there definitely are sometimes the devil monkeys <laughs> which are basically like black furred baboons okay screaming shrieking baboons <laughs> that have been sighted throughout the american southwest now uh you might be thinking like um you know with a name like devil monkey they're probably nice guys yes you're wrong shut up Sorry. Uh, this is from, again, fandom.com. Crushing it out there, fandom. Remember when I brought you guys the uh, chicken tikka burritos? <laughs> I do. We think they were, uh, they think we, we think they were leftover Indian food that they rolled up into a burrito and gave a different name. Uh, I hope you enjoyed them. So, <laughs> uh, I've eaten a couple of them. They're all right. This is from fandom.com. There have been reports of devil monkeys, which are lar large <coughs> baboon like primates that are now being spotted in the wooded areas of Flagstaff, Arizona. The eyewitnesses. Witness said that she noticed her dog was acting very agitated when they weren't uh, away. When they were on a hike through Mount Eldon Forest Trail, when she noticed a small group of primitive looking creatures scurrying through the rocks. She described them as four to five feet tall, very quick and agile. These so called creatures are called devil monkeys in other places of the United States. You like how sure. I got kind of southern with that one? <laughs> devil monkeys. Devil monkeys. Devil monkeys. Mm -hmm. I've heard Although, of the devil monkey. Uh, when you get southern like that, it sounds like it's going to be somebody uh, from a John Grisham novel with curious ideas about race. <laughs> it's the southern <laughs> bellfoot, remember? The well, southern bellfoot's got some thoughts oh. that it should keep to itself. Mm -hmm. I do, My tomatoes I, keep listen. getting eaten by these devil monkeys. <laughs> I, I invite them in, but they decline. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the devil monkeys. I just don't want them in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, primates that are now being spotted in the wooded areas of Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, other states. Oh, wait. There have also been other sightings in states such as new mexico utah and colorado damn this thing has some has some stretch has some legs mm -hmm. let's talk about those sightings cor shall we cornered the four corners uh the first reported encounter with this swift dangerous predator occurred in 1934 south pittsburgh tennessee okay according to the reports which were allegedly published in national newspapers Eyewitnesses described a mysterious beast that could leap across fields with lightning speed. These, this ability to jump great distances, up to 20 feet according to some accounts, have led some to speculate that these animals may have, have something in common with the kangaroos that have been seen through the United States for decades. That's a whole Yeah, different yeah that's, that's a different a thing entirely. Uh, yeah. Which we and might be able to talk about. They're the furry. Other Pittsburgh. They are furry. We'll talk about phantom kangaroos. It'll come up. The suggestion is that those who think they're seeing kangaroos from a distance are, in fact, spying devil monkeys. When these 1934 encounters, uh, wait, while these 1934 encounters may or may not be associated with this phenomenon, the first official devil monkey sighting happened in 1959, while a couple by the, so basically they're saying that the kangaroo side, the phantom kangaroo sighting starting, started in the 30s, but due to the idea that uh those those are misconstrued devil monkey sure. there is some <laughs> precedent to right. say that the first listen devil i want i want to make it clear days. right 
that those kangaroo sightings <laughs> were actually they were real. I'm not saying Guys, they weren't real. It's okay. It wasn't kangaroos. It was actually devil what was monkeys. It? Devil monkeys. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> The first official <laughs> devil monkey signing happened in 1959 while a couple by the name of Boyd were driving through the mountains near their home in Saltville, Virginia. According to their account, an ape-like beast attacked their car, leaving three scratch marks on the vehicle. The Boyd's daughter, Pauline, described the terrifying attacker. It had light taffy-colored hair with a white <clears throat> blaze down its neck and underbelly. It stood on two large well muscled back legs ooh, ooh, ooh. and had shorter front legs and arms. Sorry, her name was Pauline. She's <laughs> using the word taffy. Just, uh, <laughs> this is just what right. she does, people. Let right. her have it. Oh, this this all checks out. <clears throat> yeah. Uh Boyd went on to describe a second devil monkey encounter that occurred just days later in the same region. This chick's like a devil monkey magnet. Several days after this incident. It does do this. Like aliens, cryptids, ghosts, uh-huh. let demons. Like It's like a family generational thing or it's like this person that keeps attracting them. Like, Sure. It adds some validity. Jason. Jason, uh, exactly. Michael several, Myers. Freddie. Several days after this incident, two nurses from the Saltville area were driving home from, from work one morning and they were attacked by an unknown creature who ripped the convertible top from their car. Yikes. Right? Luckily, the nurses, though surely frightened out of their wits, were unharmed. Drive fast! In 1969, esteemed mystery ape researchers. That's what I want to be when I grow up. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Esteemed... Mystery ape researcher John Green looked into the accounts of a long-tailed monkey beast that eyewitnesses claimed was lurking near Momquam, British Columbia. This creature was said to have left a series of distinctive three-toed tracks, much like those attributed to the devil monkey, as well as a legendary Bigfoot. That's not entirely true. <clears throat> nice try, though, Phantom. Uh, in 1973... Lauren Coleman. You guys know Lauren Coleman? I think you're going to have to hit us with that one. Oh, I know Papa Coleman. You know Coleman. <laughs> I know Papa Coleman. Papa Coleman. <laughs> uh, an author by Papa Coleman. Well, if, you, if you hit the jackpot in, in Werewolf uh, Ray Dollar, you call it having a Coleman. You get a full Coleman. That's the, that's <laughs> the, the million Coleman bill. Yeah. yeah. The Ray Dollar is actually like how Shatoshi and Bitcoin work. Mm-hmm. It's the Ray dollar and then the coal man dollar. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, well, it's like how you call a $100 bill a Benjamin. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he yeah, investigated yeah. in 1973 reports of a black bushy-tailed giant monkey uh, that were slaughtering livestock in Albany Con- and in Albany, Kentucky. My bad. Uh, Coleman mentioned, so it seems to be kind of the south, south, mid to southwest. Uh Coleman mentioned the event in an interview with Animal Planet. I investigated that case in depth. I interviewed the people who were very sincere. In the whole context of devil monkey reports, it seemed extremely sincere. You have these reports of hairy, monkey-like creatures with tails very different from Bigfoot. In 1979, there was a spate of reported encounter... Love the word spate. Can we get a second with the word spate? Let's let's do a quick thank you. Mm. Everybody just say it once and we'll be on our way. Thank you, Spate. Spate. Nice. Uh, Spate of encounters with the bipedal monkey-like critter known as the the Bigfoot, (laughs) which hailed (laughs) from the rural depths of Georgia. One female eyewitness described it as the ugliest looking thing I've ever seen. (laughs) Burn, burn, for sure. Out of nowhere. Uh, It had a tail like a beaver's, huge slam on beaver's again. Uh, out of nowhere, but it was bushy. She also claimed it bore a face like a dog. These traits are all known to be devil monkey characteristics. In fact, more than a few eyewitnesses have described these beasts as resembling a wild dog at a distance, which suggests this creature may employ both bipedal and quadrupedal locomotion. It truly sounds like a like a population <laughs> of baboons. It does, like uh, 
exactly like how I mean like what I'm trying to say, uh, like the Beast of Leeds situation, Northeast Bigfoot, or even like gorillas in, in uh, Congo, Africa, like just a species of intelligent creature who sure. can take care of themselves, hide respect for honestly, the dead, and thus we don't know about them because they take I, care of their dead. I don't know if I would say that they seem intelligent, you know. Go they're, they're there killing, with me, damn it! They're killing livestock. <laughs> they're. Uh, I they kill could, livestock. Are you saying I'm not intelligent? They could potentially <laughs> That's be. That's what he's saying. They could potentially be like, um, just a very, you know, specialized for hunting at night population pods of undiscovered apes. You know, who knows. Yeah, uh, but that's devil monkeys. Look into them. Basically, it is a uh, kind of a catch-all term for uh, sightings and even remains that have been found. That's true. There is uh, a um, hang on. Let me find the uh, on the internet in 1996. There was a still controversial. Derrider roadkill photos, uh, which okay. seem to depict the curious carcass of an unidentified baboon-like animal with canine features on a Louisiana roadside. It's worth mentioning that in 1996, uh, Louisiana was also the site for stra another strange eyewitness report that seems very much like a devil monkey. <laughs> Damn, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, there's so much evidence to where I think there might be an undiscovered species of chimpanzee. I mean, probably baboon. Baboon. There's uh, but, people uh, have found the strange Louisiana corpses. one, and, and we'll cover this at some point. But that also sounds like the Louisiana Grunch Road Monster. Ooh, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds like uh, <laughs> something Doctor Seuss it's came a, up with. <laughs> <laughs> it's a baboony thing with a canine face, found only Crazy. in Louisiana. Hmm. The Grunch Road Monster. Uh, wild. But yeah, devil monkeys are all over the place. Watch out for them. Keep your camera phones ready. Send us the picture. We'll break it. We'll share with you the profits in, let's say, 7 billion Coleman bucks for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. This has been uh, for, Forever Yours. F wait, Forever. Oh, that was good. For, forever Yours. Yeah, okay. I'll stick with it then. I got elicited. Go. <laughs> elicited. Uh, some emotion from Roger. It's close to Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, these are, you know, so a sampling. A Whitman sampler of furry cryptids that probably all stink. <laughs> right? All these creatures smell like farts and sulfur. Don't open the box. Yeah. <laughs> not in, right not in the house. Right next to Dick and other. Uh, Nate, would you like to go now?